power hammer beats down on a bright yellow stick, chipping away at the edges as little bits sprinkle to the ground. But a closer look reveals this stick is actually a fire-hot piece of steel, fresh from this propane furnace that has warmed up to 2,800 degrees. And at that temperature, well, the steel is pretty much at the mercy of whoever is holding the hammer. Blacksmiths Silas and Jorgen are calling the shots, and the steel is following their command. With presses and, and, and large hammers that will really plastically move the material, like we can spread it and we can crush it and squash it and, and stretch it in way more drastic ways than anyone could in history. The fire that they work with is extremely hot, upwards of 3,000 degrees Celsius. And when the steel goes in and it heats up, it goes from red to orange to yellow and finally to white. And the blacksmiths say they like to work with the steel when it's orange because they get cleaner and finer lines. It's called forging, the hammering, bending, shaping and cutting that form the backbone of blacksmithing. And while this all may look and feel like it's happening halfway around the world, what's taking place in this Machosan workshop may surprise you. It's very rare that you get uh, to have a big team blacksmithing project like this, uh, where, you know, 100 years ago, every blacksmith shop had like 8 or 10 or 50 really skilled, highly skilled blacksmiths and they all work together. Silas Maddox and Jorgen Harl are among nine blacksmiths from around the Pacific Northwest in Machosan. Blocking out the steps. That are gonna... They're here to create a design that will be displayed in Pearson International Airport in Toronto. When it's done, the skyline of Toronto will be nine feet tall and stand as an example of contemporary blacksmithing, an art that is starting to make a comeback. And it never totally died out, but uh, at least in this country, there's this big resurgence and a lot of the technology had been lost and a lot of the skills had been lost. And so those guys spent a lot of time rediscovering that stuff. But Jake James says the problem is we don't really think of blacksmithing as beautiful, functional art. Blacksmithing is everything other than horseshoeing. The prime focus of what we all love to do is displacing material from solid bar and pulling these shapes out of this you know, square, lumpy, ugly material and turning it into something really quite beautiful. Known as a smith, Jake has been working out of this Machosan workshop for the past seven years and has brought together this group called the Contemporary Blacksmiths of the Pacific Northwest. It's a response to the fact that I can walk into almost any architect's office in North America and say I am a contemporary blacksmith, I'm offering you this for your project and I will generally be received with a blank stare. We're the classic artists, we're great creators and we're great forgers and designers but when it comes to promoting and running our businesses we generally struggle because we're not businessmen. It's a tight community. Many of these blacksmiths have known each other for years and it's that familiarity that will come in handy on a project like this and one Silas Maddox describes almost like a dance. It might take a minute or two to get the steps but uh, once you have that foundation and you really know what's going on, uh, th there's very little verbal communication. I mean, we do check in with each other and things like that, but uh, we, we both are at a level where we can see what's happening and respond. When you've just spent two hours forging on a piece and someone whacks the wrong bit off it, it's, it's a frustrating experience. So, yeah, and the more you work with someone, obviously, the, the, the more intuitive that working relationship becomes. And while this photo doesn't quite do it justice, the hard work of this small group is bound to attract some attention when the sculpture goes up at Pearson Airport in May. In Machosan, I'm Nikki Iwanishan.